and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our next donation deck, which is going to be Jund Sacrifice, but not exactly the uh, normal uh, tier one version of J Jund Sacrifice the, that uh, you know you're all very familiar with. Uh, we're we got a little bit more of like a Rakdos feel to this version, as you can see how we got um, Judith and Chandra in the main deck to kind of help out our, our Mayhem Devils and uh, get extra damage in. You know, of course, Judith um, works really works also really great with uh, the Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven combo as well. Um, no, no Gilded Goose. We're going with uh, Footlight Fiends. Um, that also is like another thing with Judith and Mayhem Devil. Of course, Chandra. Uh, as as you know, of course, the the second zero when you make elementals, the elementals you do sacrifice them, and so they trigger the mayhem devil. Plus, you could also sacrifice them to witch's oven to make more food. Also, um, but yeah, I really like Gol Golgari Queen's a card that I really like in these kind of decks. Uh, this is just a really good card these days. So I'm a big fan of of Golgari Queen. Glad we got those in here. Um, but yeah, besides that, you know, it's it's. You know, Oven, Cauldron Familiar, Devil, Trail of Crumbs. You know, we got the rest of the engine in here. So let's give it a try. Let's see how we do for a little bit more aggressive with our sacrifices. We're going to be playing a league. Like always, we'll play till we win five or lose two. So here we go. No, fail, no four Trail of Crumbs isn't too many. Um, why not Goose instead of Paradise Druid? Um... I mean, that's just like what our list has. Uh, I mean, I, I I really like Goose in this kind of deck. Um, it, maybe it's a it could be like a um, a thing of like just you know using the rares and stuff. But no, I I haven't seen that problem. Arena just boots up to a black screen and nothing happens. I I haven't seen that before. Maybe somebody in chat know something about that. Um, but Gilded Goose does make Trail of Crumbs a lot better. Or it'll be interesting to see how good our Trail of Crumbs are without, without having any geese. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, you don't have, don't have geese. Okay, I gotcha. That's what I was kind of figuring. Just have the one trailer crumbs out right now. Boom. Yay, Fable Passage. More green. Alright, so I'm just going to play two more trailer crumbs out here. And we'll just attack Vraska. Yeah, dedicated newbie budget day. Yeah, I I should make more budget content than what I do. Not sure about like a whole day, but just like, you know, every once in a while I I do need to make more budget con content.
I was hoping that I was gonna be able to hit a land right away first so that I could activate or so I could so I could uh you know pay another one and grab something else and still be able to play the land and have trophy. Hey Errol. Um more introductory level commentary on those days to teach the tactics and decisions more explicitly. Um. Uh, I mean, that's, yeah, I, I try to do that already, Gaming Indy. I'll, I'll, it's difficult to do, but... Um. That'd be easier to do if I wasn't streaming. But but I understand what, what you're saying and I'll have to think of how I could implement that. I'm not going to tap the Paradise Druid here. I don't want don't want them to be able to kill it with the Mayhem Devil. You would have just played the Devil and held up trophy. I think that I think that hitting a land drop was was the most valuable thing that we could do. The last turn. When uh, when we have something like um, we have something like triple trailer crumbs, we just got to hit our land drops. I'm excited about the new set. Yeah, I like I liked Theros last time also, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think I like it more than Throne of Eldraine from just looking at it. Um, I think Throne of Eldraine was a little too high on the power level scale. I think if Mono Black is really good, I think that's good for Standard. I think that's a good best deck for Standard. I am scared of Ramp. Very scared of Ramp. But a deck like Mono Black is is usually a deck that breeds enjoyable games. Um, you know, enjoyable interactive interaction games and stuff. Yeah, these treasure hunt sleeves were from the historic challenge that was this weekend that just finished up today. Opponent.
There's not like a real good way for me to kill their Mayhem Devil right now. More trailer crumbs. I don't really have a good way to get out of that. This means I get to trigger Mayhem Devil again. I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter if, like when I exactly when I did that. Massacre Girls, pretty rough too. We'll see what we find. It's just like the same math of if we like bring back the culture familiar first and then sacrifice it to the uh, like sacrifice the familiar to the oven. It's just the same math of just sacrificing the um, the Paradise Druid. I couldn't really kill the their devil. Uh because of the plus one plus one that that they were gonna get. Devil. Good 
Go, Mayhem Devil, go. All right. We had Trail of Crumbs dominance there. We're going to get these Return to Natures and a Casualties here. Um, get that thing out. Do I want to play... Do I want to play Wicked Wolf? Question number one. Do I want to play Legion's End? Question number two. Exile their Cauldron Familia. Nah. All right. Here we go. What a crummy deck. I see what you did there. Crummy. All the... Yeah. There are definitely some messy eaters over here with all these crumbs all over. Hmm. Isn't spectacular by any means. Yeah, I'm just gonna mulligan. What is this? Can we have the first one? Return two cards. I forgot we're rolling to five. All right, Storm, have a good night. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. Hopefully everything goes good. Um, do you remember any deck that works so well as a whole, like, John Sacrifice, a deck where every card have interaction with any other card in the deck? Just in, like, in the rest of Magic's history kind of thing? Or just also in Standard? The Abzian Rampage deck that I play just also in Standard is, is similar because it has the same shell, but I really love how that interacts. Um, you know, like how Trail of Crumbs gets you, like, Realm Cloak Giant gets you the Sweeper, and... Um, Othakaya and stuff like that. Oh, there you go, Baloney Pony. You can make the deck also. Awesome. If I tap the Paradise Druid, it dies immediately. So I can't really do that. Okay, yeah, Magic History. Yeah, so people said Affinity here. Um, Bant Company, and also like Four Color Rally. Those are kind of decks that are... that had just lots and lots of synergies between all the creatures. I guess Four Color Rally, not as much. But I was thinking like Bant Company is like Duskwatch Recruiter kind of being in your Trail of Crumbs kind of thing. Um. 
It's just a trade I gotta make. Gildas, Gilda Goose being an X2 instead of an X1. It's looking like it's been a big deal here. That worked out well. Um, it's tough to say. It's tough to say that you should build decks right now because Theros is going to be out in uh, three days, coming out on Thursday. So it's kind of hard to say that for me to tell you. Yeah, yeah, go build. You know, whatever, any deck. At rotation, it, that's a, yeah, super, super tough to say. Rotation, because that's, we have a lot of sets between now and rotation. So I would, I would say likely not, but like basically decks that are, decks that are good in the fall, you know, uh, aren't usually very good after rotation like that basically never happens like they, they don't usually stay good for an entire year and then also good the, the following year like that so i'd say most likely not Oh, I think I already had a rotation command that was that just linked towards uh, what's in standard .com. The main problem here is if they don't block, honestly. Okay, good. I want them to block. Because I don't have a lot of life to work with. Kind of the problem is if they don't block. Return to nature is a good good draw. Sacrificing trailer crumbs. Yeah, this works. This deck works pretty well in best of one. At least the the regular, like our opponent's version, the the normal Jones sacrifice. Um, It does. Yeah, Return to Nature is really good. It's an underrated card. That was an incredible, incredible turn for my opponent. Corvold plus Witch's Oven plus Cauldron Familiar. 
the downside of Assassin's Trophy to let them have that. Because now this, this Corvold is really like a 7-7. Seven, seven. And they're going to be able to draw more cards. Corvold's a little bit better than Judith. Not going to lie. A little better. I don't I don't really see how we can have a chance here. But yeah, it's gonna start with us attacking. Yeah, I mean next yeah, we're we're just dead here. Yeah, next because next turn we're just dead. Okay. That was All right, that was the block I needed. Have to play the other Judith on top of the other one so that we can get two two triggers to kill that. With the, yeah, legend rule. If I try targeting the Cauldron Familiar there, um, they just sack the Cauldron Familiar, bring it back kind of thing. That's not going to really work. Hey, what's up, Zerf? Even's going good. Played a pretty sweet Teamer Proliferate deck a little bit ago. And now we are on to a unique version of Jun to Sacrifice. Assassin's Trophy really, really hurt us. That that game. What if we? I mean, they're basically four core volt anyway. What if we just play Epic Downfall instead, and like a Noxious Grasp? We just got to kill Corvold.
I don't want to start my hand with an epic downfall and a grasp. You know, obviously downfall can get like mayhem devil and other stuff like that too. How much red mana do we have? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. So there's eleven red sources in our deck. We also have Paradise Druid, which kind of counts. That'd be like fifteen if we count Paradise Druid. I just don't like being being so low on mana in this kind of matchup. Trailer Crumbs, of course, is our best card. We're keeping that. It's I guess we put a land back. Yeah, I, I was counting the passages. <laughs> Go get him, devil. Go get him. Boo. All right, but we'll have Golgari Queen be able to get rid of the Trail of Crumbs. That's a, that's a win. Try to win the card advantage battle. I have not played a land yet. You'll have to try harder than that. I think I'm going to risk this. I think I want uh really wanted a land. Well that that obviously hurts. Not now not epic down following the devil. This mirror is all about who spends more mana. Land drops are are things you can't miss. And unfortunately we missed our land drop there. If you sacrifice Corvold, do you draw a card? Like does like if if they sacrifice Corvold, do they draw a card? Can somebody tell me? I don't know. I really don't know. Yes. Okay, so they will draw a card. So that means I'm going to do this then.
So they're going to draw a card anyway. So we're keeping them at just one food instead of two foods. That was my best draw. That was a very good draw. That was that was my best draw. Alright, now yeah, time for Witch's Oven to and the Cauldron Familiar, time for us to get more cards. Yeah, getting rid of their trailer crumbs was definitely a, a really big win for us with that Vraska. Don't think they're going to have instant speed exile. So I think I'm okay to bring this back now to be able to use this mana here. The second Cauldron Familiar doesn't really do a whole lot. Let's take a land drop. Really? I mean, I, I have another food token. Attack. Get more stuff. I'm not like super concerned about the Masker Girl. As far as like sure I could do the four damage to the Masker Girl. Super concerned with it. Sweet. Uh, we were pretty lucky with it, control, but. We had either like two or three matches against some beginner decks, but um, but you know we also beat some other tough matchups, and it was fun to play. All right, turn three, Golgari Queen. Or 
Turn three trail. Um. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, next set on the 16th. I waste two Judith triggers, but I think that's a win for us getting those things out of here. And, you know, staying at 18 life. Yeah, the, the the qualifier was on um the qualifier was this past weekend. It was on Saturday. I know they don't announce it any more than yeah, two week ahead of time. Yeah, you said you're on a two week vacation and so yeah, it's just I guess you missed it. It's rough in that respect um, I didn't I didn't do great I mean I went two and two I didn't do great um, it, it is up on YouTube though if you want to want to watch us playing it yeah you have to be the top hand top 1200 in mythic to qualify but it's over over multiple seasons Makes my plan a lot worse. I'm having another haste creature. Because I'm still only getting one trigger. Chandra can, can recast Trophy to kill the beast. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Oko will get, get banned in Legacy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how much play it sees in the format right now. Like I haven't, I haven't really looked at Legacy since Oko was printed. So I, I don't really have a good answer. Um, Just for, for how ridiculous of a card it is, I wouldn't really be surprised kind of thing, but it, I would not expect it. Like, I don't expect it to, but it's not something that would surprise me. All right, turns out just drawing all Gruul Spellbreakers and Questing Beasts is still good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't really plan on activating on cracking the food that turn whenever I played the second trail, and I kind of changed my and I changed my mind afterwards too. Um, to do that. All right, removal coming on in. The light fiend's just not very good. This is just a whole bunch of spells. Not as many hits for trailer crumbs. I'm gonna take out one of those, but what are we doing with these last two? Chandra can minus and recast some of our removal, which is kind of cool. Chandra's basically like a five mana walker for us right now. It's all there that game. It's really hard for Judith to actually trade up. I'm gonna just take out some Judiths. We got our one Paradise Druid. Uh, it's nothing really wrong with another one, but we could probably do better. He says, still can't believe they gave the opening plus one and thought this is okay. Myself, I honestly can't believe they printed the opening and thought this was okay. Like, that you could do that to your opponent's creatures. I think I could understand it if it was... If it was a minus one and if it was only your own creatures or artifacts. then I can kind of understand it. Right now, if they just attack with Bone Crusher Giant. I can have Cauldron Familiar. I can block with Cauldron Familiar to do one. I sack the Fable Passage to do the second, and then I um, bring the Cauldron Familiar back with the with the food to do the third. And then I can still activate the Trail of Crumbs with the one extra mana here. So that's that's like my design by setting it up this way.
Let's do attackers. All right, so that that lets me. Sack this food. I really want to find Witch's Oven, obviously. Hmm. This is the kind of problem of not playing Gilded Goose is it's it's also harder to get more food if we're Trail of Crumbs and Wolf and stuff like that. Um, hopefully we find an oven. Um... I don't know, I guess there's just not Bantu in here. As far as why I'm not playing Bantu. I don't really have anything against Bantu. I do think Corvold is a is a lot better five mana card though. Than Bantu of a, a similar stature. See you, Wolf. I could definitely see that last card in hand being a number cleave. It is not. Pretty sure, yeah, I did already play a land. Get another red source out here. Hoping Castle Lock Twain and Trailer Crumbs can help us win a long game. Or if I just stay alive. Your life's about to end. Hope you're ready. Being ruthless. Has its rewards. It's my hope. Evan. Yay. All right, game three.
Game three. One land. So yeah, we'll put the Golgari Queen back down to the bottom. That's a it's a tough one to put down back to the bottom, but you know, we gotta put something. Amateur and I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. How you doing? Let's shuffle that Golgari Queen back and get green mana. Alright, well, Cauldron Familiar is holding down this fort. Crusher Giant. Mm. We're gonna need something else. Gonna, this isn't going to be enough. I don't think I want to Noxious Grasp the Kral Harpooner for how valuable that can be against like Questing Beasts and other cards like that right now. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of cards that I liked in the in the previews that we did, you know, in the in the set review that we did. Um, I don't really remember exactly. <laughs> All of their names, but oh, that's tough. I mean, it's the oven, but that's tough. Let's let's fable passage shuffle that other card back. I liked that that blue black. Um, I don't know. They said good game is in. As in, like, I'm dead, good game. We got Embercleave. I don't know, does that mean I'm dead? I guess they... Yeah, so they, they have this plus Collision Colossus. So the game's not over. 
I I didn't sacrifice the the cauldron familiar because I didn't want to. I didn't want them to respond. With something because they pass priority. I don't. I mean, I could have. Still, of course. It looks like to me that the game's not quite over yet. I want to do this during combat so they can't just re-equip the Embercleave somewhere else. It's unfortunate. Well, that's not that big a deal. Yeah, because my, my Mayhem Devil's not going to die. So it's not, not that big a deal. Others dead. I could say good game. Back to him. That's not my style. No, that's not my style. All right, GG's. We're 2-0. Yeah, I mean that that whole engine is is pretty ridiculous. Um Keep All right, so we're going to have to use this Fable Passage to go grab a red source, which means that we're going to be shocking turn three. Hey, got a re-sub there. See Bronsong. Welcome back. Whoops. Accidentally floated mana. Cost one. It actually costs one to fetch with Fable Passage on your opponent's turn. They got an invisible Tithe Taker in play.
So I'm number 12. The Black Lance Paragon. That is not a good card to have against the cards that I have. That is not a good card to have. also not a good card to have. Um, do I want to use Judith or Mayhem Devil? I'll go Mayhem Devil. I could probably wait... I probably didn't have to, like, make sacrifice immediately. Um... That card's good. Just doing this right now so I can see if I hit an untapped land. I didn't. But we got a Paradise Druid. I oh, they published the 10 wick win decks today from the. Good what, from the MCQ? No, I did, I did not see that. So, gotta get rid of that thing. Wish we had more lands. Hope when we hit a land drop. Jeez, really? I guess not. With Trailer Crumbs and like this engine that we have going on here, we, we basically have infinite cards. It's just whether we have the mana to cast them or not. So right now it's all about getting getting mana. <laughs> oh, the best card that's not the best card that's not a land is Witch's Oven. I mean, Witch's Oven is, like, the only card that, because of, like, having, like, these other things, 
and obviously all the damage it can do. It's like the only card that I'm taking. Please land. Okay, we'll take it. My opponent needs like a Thero Absolution right now. Mayhem Devil is definitely a good one, but it's not a land. Um, yeah, we we haven't really cashed Chandra very much. We've only cashed Chandra, I think, one time. This is getting more challenging now. No, this, no, this game's not over. A lot of those cards you kind of want now. All right, shuffle.
We got trophy down there. Uh, maybe I was supposed to. Maybe I was supposed to just play another trailer crumbs first. Probably should have just done that the first time. There we go. Judith's good. Uh, like like Massacre Girl is a card that you could have in your sideboard for like these kind of these kind of things. I think I'd rather have Massacre Girl than Soot. Is it better to kill a contender or a murderous rider? Like maybe it's actually better to kill these murderous riders. Okay, looking for more things. Footlight Fiend. You are a welcome addition. Mayhem Devil, even more so. Um, all right, they're at 12. I guess I should probably do the math. So this does, so bringing this back is two damage and then sacrificing is another two damage. So that's four. And then so is it just each way is, is just two sack is two bring back is two. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. Does that sound right? I think bring back is two because it the cauldron familiar triggers and the food and then the sacrifice trigger and then killing it you get the sacrifice trigger and the Judith trigger. I uh, probably should have blocked a little bit more. Should have brought this thing back to block. I was I was just, you know, kind of doing the math, but we're fine. Let's just block some stuff.
Could have blocked one more thing. Of course. But damage should let us have lethal. <laughs> yep, got exactsies. Okay, so this could definitely be tough if they go really wide with like worthy knight since we don't have we don't have any sweepers um, So we're gonna definitely be playing this legion's end Could see them having you know like the Earl absolution That would be reckon me I reckon. They want to keep the rest the same, though. Hey, TT, welcome back. Thanks for watching the stream yesterday. We think about Racto sacrifice. Um, I like it too. You know, with Rakdos, you can get like some, some Torbrand in there. Need to keep them from going too wide, where it's too wide to handle. Forcing them to take a turn off just to activate night. Contenders. Cavalier of Night. I don't like that. I don't like that at all.
I don't like that one bit. I need to find a cauldron familiar. Oh, these acclaimed contenders. Correct me. Yeah, Vraska is definitely good. Um, if you replacement, if you have like a Corvold, you can replace it there. Claim contender was just awesome. Just buried me. <clears throat> Each one of those acclaimed contenders being an extra card, I just got buried. Getting an extra Midnight Reaper to, to try to help with the card advantage stuff and then getting a wolf in here instead of these Chandras. No, I didn't crack Fable Passage first. Because we'd have stuff like Mayhem Devil and stuff like that, but... Um, man, this hand has everything we need except for lands. Lands are an important aspect of playing... Yeah, mass. Yeah, if deck doesn't like aggro, I mean, Masker Girl helps a lot with that. So does. Um, you know, so does Wicked Wolf. So yeah, if you need a replacement for <coughs> Golgari Queen, you could go Masker Girl or Wicked Wolf. Midnight Reaper so good. Uh, 
All right, last time we had two witches ovens and no cauldron familiars. This time we got the cauldron familiar. Now we need the witches oven. Either time a trailer crumbs would be good. You know, like just like just like last game, you know, trailer crumbs would be good to get us those cards. <clears throat> Certainly like one of those as well. This looks like we're dead. Yeah, I the alternate art for the the adventure creatures were was a was like an event that was on arena that I don't know if that event is is around anymore. I mean, well, obviously the event isn't around anymore, so I don't know if you can get those those anymore. Yay! We got a Midnight Reaper. But yeah, last game was a claim contender. This game is Midnight Reaper. These cards that are getting them these extra cards. You know, like Midnight Reapers got them three extra cards. As you can see, that's base. You know, it's basically like like their hands. Usually, I usually my deck has trailer crumbs. Usually we get to outgrind people, but these two cards have just been awesome, and we have not seen Trailer Crumbs the last two games. Kaya's good. Kaya's good. I'll be back. Just you wait. Yeah, Teamer Proliferate. We, yeah, we played that one. The video's up on YouTube now. Uh, but yeah, we finished up with that one already. Engine cards, GGs. Um, I wish I would have boarded out for the Light Fiend for something more valuable, especially with them having Kaya. Should have taken out one drops, and yeah, the cards didn't do anything. Yay, trailer crumbs. We're going to get milled. Trailer crumbs, no. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess that's where we're at.
We didn't mill, like, they didn't mill over a land for us either. So there we go. Let's say we hadn't seen a land yet. Put a little pressure on them, you know, like we have the oven to sacrifice our creatures this time. Um, I regret, of course, I regret not shocking on turn one for Witch's Oven. It, I didn't want to do that automatically, but I regret not doing that. Um, <clears throat> could have drawn an extra card with the Mid Midnight Reaper. All right, well, this turn we're not hitting another land drop, so let's crack this. Man, another trail of crumbs. That's rough. All right, got that land drop. That's good. Just, yeah, kind of working our way towards Cauldron Familiar. Feel pretty good about our position right now. You know, haven't seen anything I'm too scared of yet. There's digging me towards Cauldron Familiar there. Alright, that's their first card that that is kind of scary. We don't have Murderous Rider in here, do we? Just kind of realized that. Yeah, I just realized that. We don't have... You know, we have a... Yeah, you know, we don't have, like, a, a good removal spell to grab with Trailer Crumbs. Alright, so a lot a lot more scared now with the Lockmare Serpent.
fact, I could definitely use Gilded Goose and a Murderous Rider. Instead of these Footlight Fiends and Chandras. Our worst cards are definitely Footlight Fiend and Chandra. Hmm. What are we going to do about these gargoyles? Can't block this thing. We're taking 17, and there's nothing I can possibly draw to, to get us out of that. Okay. Let's get duress, casualties. I guess allegiance end for the five fours. And so I'm thinking like I don't really want Judith against. Um, you know, against them with like their cry of the canarium deck. I guess we'll play the Chandras. Okay. Game number two. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know if we'll have time for the third deck today. I was just looking at the time, I just realized this is our fourth match. Like, so if we win this, 3 1, and then we play two more. This could be over three, like we can, this may get us to just 10 o'clock. I don't need a second Paradise Druid. Just to die to a Cry of the Canarium. I'm getting Trailer Crumbs out of my hand before Thought Erasure. Like, honestly, my best curve is playing Paradise Druid this turn and then playing Mayhem Devil the following turn. But because of Thought Erasure, I think we have to get Trailer Crumbs out of the hand. Hey, Chris! Nine months already. Has been. Thank you so much. Really relying on tra trailer crumbs.
No land drop. Your corpse will make a nice souvenir. A light or a light. Okay. Don't have anything to uh, recast with Chandra right now. But I do want to get Chandra in play before we don't have that ability to anymore. Before they, you know, kill my paradise druid. It's be a good time to find that legion's end. No, I didn't. I didn't anticipate that of food decks being good. I mean, well, I mean, if, if you're talking about like with Oko, I mean, yes, I thought I thought so with Oko. But if you're talking about like like Jund without Oko, like basically, I thought, yeah, I guess I guess that's maybe answers the question. Maybe not. I don't know. Unfortunate. Fire spreads fast. Oh, they can't block anymore. Uh, I should attack for two. I want to put it over here because of Cry of the Carnarium. Good night, Bloney Pony. It's definitely a game where I really miss, really wish we had Murderous Rider. They got a lot of cards over there, and they have a 5-4. I'm not, not confident in our, in our game here. We do actually have Culture Familiar, which is oven going though. Hey, we got another resub. Kieran, welcome back. 
Thank you so much for that tier one reset. I guess I should have just played the, the forest. So I could bring back Cauldron Familiar. The reason why I'm sacrificing on main phase and keeping this over here, though, again, is, is because of Cry of the Carnarium. I need to try to keep the cat out of the Carnarium. Maybe this gives me more information when I start making decisions with trailer crumbs. Wow. Alright, we got it under counter magic. Of course they do have the Murderous Rider. They can kill Mayhem Devil still. These Into the Stories have been pretty great. So they have one counter spell up. they don't have Cry the Carnarium for now, but I don't want to give them you know, the opportunity to exile everything in case they draw it. Still have two counter spells available. Oh, 
was winding on down in the center. <clears throat> Alright, at least we got the, the counter spells out of their hands. So we can work for the win. I mean, they're very far ahead. Yeah, they're they're not very far ahead, but yeah, they're they're definitely ahead. Oh come on! All right, never mind. Now they're very far ahead. Now that this game's over, that was a great top deck. It's a card I was playing around for a while. Speaking of top decks, that was a very good one on our side, though. I think I have to wait and try to try to kill this Lockmere Serpent with casualties. Okay, Golgari Queen, it's nice. Because of course, I, this is an artifact, you know, so I could like destroy that as an artifact and this as a creature, but that's why I didn't want to just fire off casualties because I think I have to get rid of this Lockmare Serpent. But it's just going to come back. Um, so it's not a, a very good answer. Oh gosh. Into the story now also? And those are a couple of great top decks in a row. Cry the Carnarium then into the story. These into the stories have just looked fantastic in their deck. Four mana draw four. That's the third one of them they've cast. Getting rid of the Dismal Backwater because they can't sacrifice Dismal Backwater. They can only sacrifice Islands and Swamps. I guess we're not technically dead even though we're basically dead. They're, they get to draw a lot of cards of the Serpent now. can't really grab the casualties of war. They can mill it over with the gargoyle if they want. So it's either they drew a counter spell for casualties and then they don't care that I draw it. Or they just mill it over. Yeah, this this all lined up for my opponent very well both of these games. My Legion's End is milled over. It really shows like that the problem with not playing Murderous Rider, like we just don't have removal and we can't kill a 5-4 flyer since we don't have removal. 
So there we go. There's a little different version of John's sacrifice. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think just like your your normal stock John sacrifice, I, I think that I think is going to be a better version of this. If we have like Footlight Fiend, Judith, and Chandra, like those are like our different cards that we have. That you know, those are like the cards that are different. And unfortunately, those were were very weak compared to playing Gilded Goose and Murderous Rider and Corvold and those kind of stuff. So yeah, and you know, trophy kind of the same kind of thing. Like one of our we got <clears throat> one of our losses was because of trophy, like just a game. Instead of being a murderous rider. But anyway, alright, so there we go. Um there's John Sacrifice. Uh yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much Witches Oven Cauldron Familiar really um how much those things like really uh get played you know, um, next set, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that kind of shut down Cauldron Familiar, which is oven in the next set and more good artifact and enchantment removal and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll have to see. I don't think that it's just going to be dead, you know, but I think it's going to be a smaller part of the metagame. The trophy destroying the Ember Cleave was pretty sweet. That was, that was good. That's true. That was good. That was, that was sweet. Got to, got to give it to trophy for that. The next turn, my opponent played another Ember Cleave, but, you know, we got rid of the first one and stayed alive there because of it. <clears throat> anyway, all right, there we go. There's John Sacrifice. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Um, let me know what you think about Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven going into Theros. You know, feel free to leave those comments. Um, if you think, you know, just let me know how you think they're going to... Uh, do in the Theros metagame. All right, but uh, that's it here for Jun Sacrifice. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.